Hey everyone, welcome back. I am Kusha Frank. So today's case is a little bit different. This is not something I was planning on branching out into, but I am emotionally connected to this case, so I wanted to cover it. So today I'll be covering the disappearance and murder of Boy Pilo Sisele. But before I get into that, I would like to give out my usual disclaimer. I mean no disrespect to the people I am going to be talking about. This is just information I found online and compiled into a video for educational purposes and for people to be aware of these cases. So I remember seeing Oipelo's missing person poster on Facebook and I shared it. I remember thinking to myself how the circumstances surrounding her disappearance were so similar to those of Amahle Tabete. About a month after seeing her missing person poster, whilst doing research for a completely different case, I came across a post about her and it was honestly not the news I was expecting. Nine-year-old Oipelo's body was found not so far from her home. She was murdered. Nine-year-old boy Pilo Sisele lived in Moa Gang in Kronstadt in the Free State. She lived with her mother, Pina Limit Sisele, her grandmother and 15-year-old brother. She was a grateful learner at Riyadumela Primary School at the time she was murdered. Boy Pilo is said to be an intelligent child who loved questioning things. She'd never let anything slide and she'd make sure that you answered all her questions. She deeply loved her family and she was also deeply loved by her family because she was her mother's last born. She was, she was just the sweetest and the kindest little girl. On Tuesday the 1st of September, Oipilo's mother had plans of visiting a friend in Pomolong. At 11am, Oipilo left home to go play with her friend about a street away from her home whilst her mother went to visit her friend. About two hours later, Oipilo went back home for a glass of water, then went back to playing with her friends. Later on in the day, Bina asks um, Oipilo's 15-year-old brother to go call Oipilo to come back home for lunch. He goes out to look for her, but he comes back alone because he could not find her. At around 3 p.m., the family realized that something was definitely wrong because Boy Pelo was still not home. So her grandmother decides to go out and look for her. She called out for her, looked for her, and asked a few people if they had seen her. After exhausting all measures, she goes back home to report this to Boy Pelo's mother. Boy Pelo was nowhere to be found, and she was last seen talking to a tall man who was wearing blue workers overalls. Confused, uh, Pina rushes out the house and goes to the home of one of Boy Pelo's friends just to ask her you know where her daughter was. The little girl tells her she doesn't know where Boy Pelo is and tells her the same story that Boy Pelo had left with this man and this man had asked her to go look for change at a local tuck shop. Very confused, overwhelmed and worried about the news of her daughter just leaving with this unknown man, Pina decides to go back home and contacts the police and the missing person file was opened. The news of Boipilo's disappearance makes waves around the community and members came out in numbers wanting to help the family. The community leader, Mr. More Nateme, contacts the family and the family explains everything to him. Once the police arrive, he gathers members from the community and they all start a massive manhunt and they start retracing Boy Pelo's steps from that day. The community did an almost 24 hour search for Boy Pelo every day. They would cover almost 60 kilometers in one day and only call it a day at around 12 a.m. almost every day and they'd unfortunately come back with nothing. Boy Pilo's disappearance made the whole community angry and also devastated at the same time. Pinky Monyake, a community member, said that she was devastated. She couldn't sleep nor eat because that's how deeply affected she was from Boy Pilo's disappearance. Like those of you who stay in the township or like small communities will understand the sense of community and the strong relationship 
built amongst you know um community members the phrase umdana ukuliswa yilali you know is an actual thing in like small knit communities and that's what this community was going through you know this didn't just affect Waipilo's mother but the whole community because her child is their child and vice versa her mother was going through the most and she was definitely worried because the last person Waipilo was seen with was, was an unknown man and she and her family had exhausted all possible measures you know they had gone to hospitals but they couldn't really go inside because COVID-19 and no visitors were allowed. On the 10th of September 2020, a prayer service was held in search for Boy Pelo. Members from the South African Police Service, the Free State Traffic, Department of Education and the community attended. Ina pleaded to the man who walked off with Boy Pelo to bring her back home. She begged him to bring her daughter back alive. Two weeks after Boy Pilo's disappearance, 12 days to be specific, on the 12th of September 2020, at around 4 p.m., a group of kids were playing on the street when they started smelling this strong and weird odor coming from a shack. They went to report this to Mr. Teme, the community leader, and he and some members from the community went to inspect, you know, what the smell was and where it was coming from. They went to the shack and they found it locked. They broke the lock and forced entry. The second they got inside, they were just overwhelmed by the strong smell. The shack itself was just a mess. It was filthy. Mr. Tebe realizes that the smell was coming from the wardrobe and what he sees is he realizes that her hand was showing from outside the wardrobe. He opens it and the smell was... They find the decomposing body of nine-year-old boy Pilo Sisele and they quickly alert the police. This shack was three streets away from boy Pilo's Home. The news of her death sends shockwaves throughout the community. The members were furious and what made them so furious was the fact that this man was with them 24-7. He too was looking for Boy Pelo, knowing very well what he had done to her. He knew the community's every move. He was there for all the meetings and he was almost ahead of them. Whilst the police were busy at the scene, the shack owner and only suspect at this point shows up and the community attacked him. They beat him up and they made sure. The police tried to intervene but they too were attacked. But ultimately after some struggle, they were able to take the suspect out of the situation. The suspect was later declared dead by the emergency medical services. So after the struggle and everything, the police urged the community to be calm. Now, how do you expect people to be calm after an innocent life of a child, a nine-year-old, was cut short? Boy Pelo Cicela's funeral was held on the 18th of September, 2020 at her home. Her family and schoolmates could not hide their grief during the funeral service. Peers remember the classmate with the beautiful heart. Staff at Ray Dumela Primary also shared One of her teachers said that they had lost a good child. She continued to say, and I quote, Wepila was a darling, a quiet and intelligent child. As a school, we lost a daughter and a brilliant child. The Cecilia family, community of Mao Gang as large, have lost a daughter. A call was made for perpetrators of gender-based violence to face harsher sentences, you know, and I fully agree with this, like, when will it stop, you know, as long as these men are not charged, as long as these men are not given harsher sentences, they will continue killing and harming our women and children, you know, um, how long must we live in fear?
Mr. Morena Tebe appeals to the community to ensure that they look after the children playing out in the street, you know. Um, and it's honestly unfortunate that Boipilo had to die like this. Such a painful death. Boipilo's life was cut short by a pervert of a man. I don't want to say this, but a part of me is happy that this man is dead. It won't bring her back. But death is a permanent way of ensuring that this man won't do the same thing to another child. I believe that this is guaranteed justice for her and for her family. The police did a post-mortem on her body, but the results have not been made to public knowledge. But I will update you guys when anything changes on this case. There's only been one suspect and he is dead. So we don't know if anything else had conspired, you know, from the time Opelo was playing with her friends to the time she had died. But that is it for this case. I will see you guys on my next video.